I saw anger in, in a really powerful way, um, in a very interesting way, connected to sports. Now, none of you guys get angry at when your sports teams don't do well. I'm thankful for that because you keep it within the eternal perspective. So praise God for that. I'm not picking on anybody, not on the Cowboys fans, not on anybody. <laughs> He's Raiders, baby. He's with me. <laughs> Jesus, help us. No, I was, uh, I was in Paris, and I like soccer, international soccer. We talked about that before. And it was the first time, because I've been at lots of NFL, and I've been at baseball and all sorts of things where you boo, and you uh, boo, or oh, this is the thing, and you're yelling at us stuff. I had never been in the rowdy, they call them the ultras. They're the ultra fans. They're the ones that pop flares. They scream. They stand the whole match. They're screaming and hitting drums. And we had metal walls with spikes at the top that separated us from the rest of the fans. That's where I was sitting. And we were like learning all the French vocabulary you shouldn't say. And they are like going forward and people are like, ah, there's, you're getting smoke inhalation. It's crazy stuff going on in the end. And you, if a goal happens, people lose their mind. You know what I'm saying? And if there's a bad call, they lose their mind as well. And here's the thing. They had one of the end caps was directly beside kind of catty corner to where the away fans sat. And the away fans were literally, they had metal walls separating them from the other fans as well. Then they had netting that went all the way up to the top of the stadium to protect them from people throwing bottles at them or bags of urine at them. And then they had cops, all, police, all the way up in riot gear, each up the side of the outside uh, passageway stairs to protect them from people who would go over the metal razor fence through the netting to attack them. I was in the stands, and the guy in front of me is screaming how much he hates not the fans, an individual fan that was in the other section. You know how angry you are when you are not talking about the fans. You're talking about that guy in the red shirt. I'm going to get you. And I was like, well, that is very personal. I mean, yeah, he likes Marseille, but really? You know, it's like, ah, ah. And just like, man, that vein starts going. How many people know about the vein? Man, and he was going all because... That person was against his team. See, what happens is we place ourselves in this place of the judge. And we're judging that we are right and that anything that's not our perspective is absolutely wrong. And because of that, I have this gavel to say, guess what? I'm bringing justice right now. And that can be in the form of disagreement or screaming or yelling or whatever. But it, that's where it comes from. It, because, it's because we care so much that we have such anger. You know what I'm talking about? Many times that's why we become angry at those around us that we love so much. Because we love so much and we care about it so specifically that when it doesn't go the way I think it should go, remember pride last week? That I have this, uh, this anger that starts. The problem is that we are not a righteous judge the way that God is. And he's the righteous judge. He's the true judge, the one that says, give this thing to me, give this thing to me, for I will judge it righteously. And we want to hold on to it. We want to pick it up. We want to carry that hurt, that anger, that disgust, that bitterness, that stuff, that unforgiveness. We pick it up and we carry it. We're angry because we think that we are going to get to be the judge when it doesn't work like that. It just eats us up instead. It says this in Scripture, Do not let the sun...